Ah, just how nice home ice has been. As the Bears return to their den here at Giants Center, the home ice sheet has had a lot of roar directed towards opponents. The Bears 23-9-2-2 on the year. That is a win clip at nearly 70%. Coachella Valley in the playoffs, 3-4 and four on the road. And this home crowd is ready to growl, claw, and roar their way to a victory here tonight. Joining us for the first time tonight, Ice Sign. Hi, Andrew. It was 13 years ago tomorrow that the Hershey Bears won their last Calder Cup. And if people take a look up to the Raptors here at Giants Center, well, they made it to the finals in 2016. But that is where they were swept against Lake Erie. You got to go all the way back to game six of the 2010 finals for Hershey's last win. As you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Hershey lost games one and two here at Giants Center and then won four straight, three of them on the road down in Texas. And game six on home ice, June 14th, 2010, when the club's 11th Calder Cup. Now, the man that lifted that trophy is in the building as team captain, Brian Helmer. He watches from the team suite, hoping he could lead this team to a similar comeback, guys. Thank you, Fish. We'll get right to Ethan. Easy question, man. How did it feel to get that playoff goal? Really good. Uh, it's been a long playoff run for me personally, but uh, nothing feels happier than helping the team get ahead, and we're just looking to do it again this period. You guys do get the jump. You go in at 1-1, but how important was it to grab an early lead here and you do it on the power plane, killing two birds with one stone? Yeah, for sure. We've been obviously struggling to get goals past this guy, and it uh, feels really good as a group. Um, and now we just got to keep things rolling going the rest of the game. Hunter Shepard into this game early. How important was it for the bench to see him get shots early and to see him with the flow that he has here? Uh, it's huge. You know, he's he's our backbone. We see him doing well and working his butt off, and we're just following suit. So, you know, he, he really sets a standard for hard work with us, and uh, we just like to see what he does. How much fun is it being back on home ice and having this crowd behind you? Unbelievable. I don't know if it's been this loud all season, but it's unbelievable. We give them some taste of their medicine, and uh, the OA ice isn't too fun to play on. All right, Ethan, I'll let you get back to the locker room. Thanks a lot, man. Right, thank you. You heard it. They love the roar behind them. When we come back, Jim Jones and I break down the first period action. You're watching Hershey Bears hockey here on Fox 43.2. Welcome back to Giant Center Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43.2. Andrew Clisson alongside Jim Jones. Jonesy, a lot to like in that period. Let's start with it. The give and go between Garrett Pilon and Joe Snively. And finally, Joe Snively puts one in the back of the net. Yeah, two guys. Uh, Garrett Pilon's had a great series so far, and you love to see that give and go. And the Bears that did a great job of pushing the pace all period long. Right after that, we gave a little shout out and maybe a little of note and what we expect to see from Sam Annis. He's been one of the more productive guys in the playoffs for the Chocolate and White, and he comes through with a great goal. And you got to give it up to Ronnie Lewis. He saw it right away on the ice. Yeah, longtime goal judge Ronnie Lewis. Lewis, he had the light on right away. Sam Ennis played in the Calder Cup Finals last year with Springfield. That's a big goal to end the uh, second period for the Hershey Bears. Yeah, that injury was an abdominal injury, and he's come back with flying colors. A lot to like in that period. If there was one downside, Hershey not really sharp on the power play. No, but uh, great to see the, a lot of good things. Uh, Hunter Shepard with a big save after Joe Snively's goal. Nelson talked about cycling the puck. I think they did a great job of that in the second period. He, Coach Nelson also talked about discipline after those penalty issues in game two. Hershey not responding to any of the antics. We've seen Beck Mal Malenstein rough it up a little bit, but that was after Hunter Shepard got taken out. You got to defend your goalie. You always have to protect your goalie. The, tra the train to the penalty box ended out in Coachella. And the other thing, too, we got to give a shout out to the Hershey Bears fans. This is a tough building to play in each and every night. You don't want to open that door as we go into the third period. We're walking through the hallway. We finally hear some hooting and hollering some good vibes and good mojo going right now for Hershey. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the room during the season. I don't think there's anything to worry about. You got guys like Beck Malenstein, Mason Morelli, and the captain has played really well. Shout out to Dylan McElrath. He's played a good game tonight after a rough one in Coachella Valley. Played a very good game. A lot of defensemen hopping up into the zone. If there's one guy we could get a goal from, it'd be Mike Vecchioni. Am I right? Mike Vecchioni brings it each and every night. He's not always on the score sheet, but he, you know, there's a guy we got Annis on the score sheet. we got Snively on the score sheet as well. So let's get Mike Vecchione, and maybe we can get one of these. We can get a little bit of a roar afterwards, like, ah, like that. Absolutely. The crowd is roaring. A lot of good stuff going. The most important stat is Hershey is up 3-1 in Game 3 of the Calder Cup Finals. You're watching Hershey Bears Hockey right here on Fox 43.2. Andrew Callista of the Nittany Game Week crew, he's out there with them and joins us live now from Champaign. Hey there, Callista. Yes, Alyssa, Penn State on the road in the Big Ten opener. That is a nerve we will 
we'll touch on a little bit. I'd like to say it's a little bit quiet here in Champaign, but not with the Penn State Nittany Lion faithful. You know that they are bringing the noise. Let's touch on that nerve for Penn State fans. The recent memories of PSU and Illinois are not good. Who could forget this nine overtime saga in 2021? The Lions lost that one again. Nine overtimes. It's one of those memories you just want to banish from your brain as well. It's the first time Penn State faces off against Illinois since that date in Happy Valley two seasons ago. I hope you closed your eyes. It was all right. Penn State ranked number seven. A line I not ranked as they go to Kansas last week. The crowd and 11 a.m. kick locally should be rowdy as it's an orange out at Memorial Stadium for the Lions Big Ten opener. And hey, James Franklin and the fans, they love that. We get nothing. We're around here, opening on the road in the Big Ten. We love it. Um, I actually called Pat a little bit ago, and, and yeah, I think they're talking about coming out with a new schedule. So, you know, we're going to try kind of reverse psychology and, and, and ask to be on the road this year and see what happens. Yeah, Big Ten has it out for us sometimes, starting so every, every uh, away Big Ten on the road, I feel like. And no, it's been good to go out there and get a win and start the Big Ten slate off, off well this year. I got it. Anyway, let me fill oh, your hair. <laughs> It's the eighth conference road opener for the Nittany Lions who have had one Big Ten opener at home in the last 14 years. And let's take that back a little bit further. Since 31 years of Penn State being in the conference, 22 Big Ten openers have happened on the road. That is something James Franklin and A.D. Pat Graff want to address. That is something these fans want to address as well. They are rowdy for this game tomorrow. From all over the country, Penn State Nation in Champaign, Illinois. Live in Champaign with Penn State, Andrew Klissa, Fox 33. The Nittany Lions set to host Michigan at Beaver Stadium on Saturday. And while this game normally comes with a lot of hype, it gets a little bit more spice this year thanks to some controversy. And that hype between number two and number nine, yeah, it's organic. Penn State and their fans really need a win against a top team. But my investigation skills and sign reading ability tells me there is more to this game than just football right now. And that is controversy. And it revolves around around Jim Harbaugh and Michigan's alleged sign-stealing scheme of opposing teams. According to reports, the Big Ten formally notified Michigan that it could be facing disciplinary action from the conference. The NCAA is investigating the illegal sign-stealing, and all eyes and cameras literally are on Harbaugh. Potential Big Ten discipline could be a suspension. Penn State coach James Franklin was asked about that leading up to his team's big game on Saturday. And let's just say, coach is focused. All the stuff that we see on film, their players, their scheme, um, all the stuff, when I say see on film, what we see on the, the coach's copy of the film, the stuff that's going on between the sidelines, the, the 53 and a third, that, that's what we're focused on. So Coach Franklin drops some shade on Michigan as he says the film of all 22 and the 53 of one third yard wide field. Very clever coach, so no sideline recordings. Now my advice to the Penn State coaching staff, change up the signals. You do know who is watching. And if you see people like this on the sidelines or like this and they're filming you, contact security and fans, be in on it. that embodies the energy that surrounds high school football than our very own Andrew Callista. Hey, Todd, it is hard to hear you out here. You saw me checking me. The cheerleaders are into this game. You know why? Because it is a good one. Susquehanna Township, Mannheim Central, home of the Bears. 603 wins above the scoreboard. They're looking for 604. We got a good one. We're going to hear from Coach Joe Heaton coming up, but also Coach Dave Hahn. And speaking of Coach Hahn, it is a family affair here with the Barons. Lindsey Barna introduces us to the Hahn family and what football means to them. Plenty of things to build towards the future here at Mannheim Central. I know both coaches are excited. The teams are excited. The cheerleaders are excited. Six, three matchups in the playoffs are always tough ones to predict. That is what the postseason is all about. But you know what? When you're at Mannheim Central, there's one young man that you always got to talk to. Jackson Brubaker. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing good. How excited are you for this playoff matchup? Holy crap. It's been a long time coming. I'm very excited to see what these guys have to show. And yeah. Are you predicting a Mannheim Central win? Absolutely. 
Wait, we all be going away. All right, man, I'll look forward to you running out and helping the team out, guys. Right. Have a good one. Lindsay, you just heard from Jackson. Everyone's excited here. I know you're pumped up for your game tonight as well. Welcome back to the Fox 43 High School Football Frenzy. We've heard from Coach Dave Hahn of Mannheim Central. The other side of the matchup, Susquehanna Township and head coach Joe Heaton. Coach, you guys smoking hot coming down the stretch, five out of six, get into the playoffs. What's the vibe like right now with the team? The, t the team feels very good. You know, we had a great 10 days to work with it. I always said, like, when you get a bye, it's like we start the season. So our kids are ready, they're prepared, and uh, hopefully we get lucky tonight and get successful. Now, you are one of the great motivators that I've ever been around, especially on coach. You're a Super Bowl speech hold the rope i brought rope just for this so coach as you answer this hold the rope and what's the message to the guys before coming out here tonight is just holding on to this rope lifting others as we climb it's, it's going to be a difficult task but if we all stay on the rope and, and move in the same direction with the same goal we got a chance to be successful what are the keys that you have to do to stop manheim central and you being successful in your own right to come out on top we got to create at least two turnovers we have to be perfect and limit our penalties all right coach nice and simple to the point like a teacher who's been doing it for close to 30 years. Coach, thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Todd, back to you. Exeter Mannheim Central was a barn burner last year. Thank you, Lindsay. From there, we'll head over to the York Adams. Susquehannock and Eastern York both started out hot, but I've seen some adversity lately. This one huge for the postseason as Eastern is eighth in the power rating. Susky 10th in 4-8. Ten teams make it in. The two are clashing out at Susquehannock. Golden Knights love to use their power run game, and they use it effectively. Nasi Valenti through the hole for the score. And hey, Coach Kyle's like, yo, I can throw the ball as well. Quinn Bramble on the money to Zerquez Robinson wide open. Knights up big early. Warriors, they're going to look to get back into this one. One of the best runs we are going to see of the night comes from Michael Fox. Look at the move right here. I should say on the little screen pass in there. Whoop! Outside, but Eastern is too much. They take it 26 to 13. We're going to stay in York County as Kennerdale heads north to meet York Suburban. Rams and Trojans can both use this to push that 10th spot for a postseason spot for First quarter, watch this. C.J. Rissmiller is a beast. Stood up, bounces off. Who is he? Sean Alexander sheds tackles and he scared me in the corner for an early 7-0 lead. Next drive, if Rissmiller is the thunder, Taza Sweeney is the lightning. Look at the cut and he gets north and south. 70 yards later, he's got a house call. 14 zip Trojans. Every student in the building is happy in the stands except this guy right there. Rams, they bounce back. Start with defense. Noah Tarbert, nice ball skills for the pick in the end zone. The shut down a drive and two plays later it's a throwback Jess up sharp to Hayden Klim 76 yards later I'm gonna spoil the ending he gets in 14 7 at that point but York Suburban big second half win 31 to 13 after some trips to the Lank Lab and the York Adams we're due for some mid pen action Alex Collie he starts his night in Derry Township Thanks, Evan. I pulled the hammy watching that long run. Shout out to the watch party going on right now at American Legion Post 272 in Langlestown. From hey, why don't we head to the LL? El Elko and Lampert or Strasburg have been known to test their limits on the scoreboards combined. The two teams have been posting over 40 points nine times this season. A lot of excitement for this one. Could determine a postseason home game. A look at the parents on the field with their cheerleaders. Love that. Love the unis as well. LS in black. Elko and white mistakes early for the Raiders. Hot potato, fumble on their first possession, recovered by the Pioneers four plays later. Quarterback Trent Wagner, pump fakes, then finds wide out Dean Hur in crossing round. Hur is in for the first score of the game. On Elko's second drive once again, Steven Rosado throws it right in the hands of Pioneers Demo Gray. The return is called back for a hold. Students don't care. Skip to the second quarter. Raiders Paul Williams reads Wagner, gets his hands up at the perfect time. Love to see D lineman bat passes down. Doesn't stop LS though. Three plays later, Wagner connects with her. LS up 14-0 at that point. They roll big 49 to 0. Back over to the York Adams as Dover makes her way to Dallas Town. Wildcats fired up. Eagles square on the bubble in the 5A power rankings. Check this out by Dallas Town. Antonio Bordana. What an interception. Top play nominee. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Students know what they're doing. Yeah, that way. Ensuing drive. Cody Kisner with a heave. Michael Scott comes down with it. Great camera work right there, Casey. What an adjustment. Dallas Town, everything working, including the run game. High fives all around. Christopher Camardi splits it right into your living room. Wildcats take it 51 
13, the final. Hey, on the ice, Hershey Bears are back. The Calder Cup champions return to the ice. Do you think Fox 43 is excited for that? I think so. Just I, a little bit. I Listen think up. we are. Hey, thanks a lot for everybody. Make sure you send in those photos, especially if you get one of Alex Colley on the sideline. He Don't is the man. Up. Thanks for watching. Todd Slowski is back next week. As always, score touchdowns and go for two, everyone.